to fill the District 2 trustee seat. Bay City authorities make an arrest after a search warrant is used in the 2900 block of Avenue I. And the DOJ sue Texas and Governor Greg Abbott over the floating barriers installed in the Rio Grande. We had additional showers this afternoon roll through the area. They've all collapsed for the night, so it's going to be nice and quiet. Thing is, tomorrow there may be a shower or two, but there's also going to be dust in the air, and we'll talk about that coming up in a moment. And the Victoria Generals are looking to win four in a row after tonight's game. That's coming up in sports. You're watching 25 News Now at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Don Brubaker and I'm Karina Garcia. Bridget Marshall was appointed as the new District 2 trustee. Marshall plans to use her 20 years in education for the new role. She has worked and lived in Victoria her whole life. The selection comes after the board accepted Dr. Estela de los Santos resignation earlier this month. And so here's your Veerpool tonight. Scan that QR code on your screen to take part right now. The issue is or the question is what issues do you want to see the VISD board focus on security curriculum, infrastructure, mental health, or staffing issues. Well, according to these results tonight, 30% say security, 43% say curriculum, 5% say infrastructure, 3% say mental health, and finally, 19% say staffing issues. Thank you for voting tonight. All right, Bay City Police arrested 39-year-old James Andrews on drugs and weapons charges. Using a search warrant in the 2900 block of Avenue I, Bay City Police seized almost 9 pounds of cocaine, about 34 grams of pills believed to be fentanyl, two AR rifles, and three pistols. Andrews transported to the Matagorda County Jail. He was booked on two drug charges and a felon in possession of a firearm charge. Five Cedar Hill police officers are on administrative leave after a shooting a man they say was suspected of shooting another man at a medical building Tuesday afternoon. Officers arrived and found a person on the ground with a gunshot wound. Another officer arriving at the clinic told responding officers about seeing a man armed with a long gun leaving the scene in a black four-door Chrysler. About a block down the road, the driver of a black Chrysler crashed into another car. Five officers were at the scene and reported seeing the man in the vehicle with the same long gun and they all fired at him. After the shooting, officers removed the man from the car and provided first aid. The man who has not yet been identified was taken to a hospital in critical condition. Dallas police investigating a police officer involved shooting this afternoon. Authorities said officers working near Love Field were watching a stolen U-Haul truck when they say a man got into a cab. The man saw the officers looking at him and slammed the truck into the surveillance vehicle. He then tried to escape and a car chase ended in a shootout. Authorities say the man fired at the pursuing officer and the officer returned fire before the man was finally taken into custody. A man accused of driving to Dallas to kill his high school girlfriend's husband in a murder for hire plot. The trial started today. KXAS reports 49 year old Darren Ruben Lopez gunned down Jennifer Faith's husband outside their home in October 2020. Jennifer Faith said she was having an affair with her high school boyfriend, who authorities said drove from Tennessee to Dallas to kill her husband. The victim's wife pleaded guilty to helping find her husband's killer as well as planning his death. Victoria police say just after 10 a.m. today, a white Mitsubishi Mirage headed north on Moody Street was hit by a black sedan at Moody and Constitution near downtown. The Mirage hit a pole. No one was hurt and no one was sighted. Let's take a first look at your forecast with First Orange Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Mac Pettis. I know someone personally. Mm -hmm. It's my wife, actually, who said <laughs> we got 10 to 15 minutes of rain today. Mac, oh, at our that's house. the good news we like to hear. Yeah. And, and, and you go down as the luckiest couple in town because they had rain yesterday, too. Not yeah. bad. Very good. Yeah. Well, hopefully you are lucky to get a double uh, whammy of rain. Uh, this evening, we're looking at an 83. So comfortable, 83, you know, uh, compared to what we've been through. But we actually made it to 99 this afternoon, right at about 5 o'clock. Interesting. The clouds developed. We had the rain. They, de they departed and then we rose the temperature up. So temperatures a little bit more um, closer to that for the next few days. But the thing is, we've got dust coming at us. And so, yes, you can sing dust in the wind coming up in a moment. I'll tell you all about it in a minute. Back to you.
Back, thank you. Troops from the Virginia National Guard now in Eagle Pass along the U.S.-Mexico border. According to Governor Greg Abbott's office, since Operation Lone Star began in March of 2021, 28,000 criminal arrests were made along with 25,000 felony charges and the department has seized more than 400 million lethal doses of fentanyl statewide. The Virginia National Guard troops were deployed by Governor Glenn Youngkin for 30 days. Our soldiers come into contact with human trafficking every single day. And you can see the evidence of it. They'll tell you these stories when, 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 uh, when you come into contact with them of, of, uh, of, of paying off cartel members, human traffickers. Governor Youngkin says every state is a border state and impacted by fentanyl and human uh, trafficking. And the battle over a controversial floating barrier at the southern border, and now it's heading to court. Yeah, the Justice Department is suing Texas, demanding that the floating barriers used to block migrants from crossing into the state must be removed now. The showdown between Texas Governor Greg Abbott and the Department of Justice is heating up. They're using some obscure statute to try to stop us from continuing to deploy those buoys. The DOJ suing the state of Texas, demanding the state immediately remove a 1,000-foot buoy system and razor wire from the Rio Grande. It's a barrier system Governor Abbott says was put in place to deter migrants from crossing into his state. The argument, I guarantee you, will be made in federal court that the Biden administration has abandoned their role um, in securing the border and the states had no alternative. The DOJ alleging the barrier violates the Rivers and Harbors Appropriation Act, which prohibits the creation of any obstruction not affirmatively authorized by Congress to the navigable capacity of any of the waters of the U.S. While the DOJ lawsuit doesn't mention the potential danger the buoy system poses to migrants, the White House is calling the tactic inhumane. Instead of coming to the table and trying to figure out a way to work together, uh, he continues to do this really uh, cruel, uh, unjust, inhumane uh, ways of moving forward. Magali Urbina owns a pecan orchard in Eagle Pass, Texas, along the Rio Grande. Uh, now it just looks like a war zone. Urbina worries that while Abbott, Texas, and the DOJ spar in court, the toll on migrants who are continuing to cross the border will continue. And they may drown, then they have to get to the concertina wire, they may get cut up. It's hot, and yes, I have seen people die from heat stroke on the property. I'm Cole Higgins reporting. The landowner says she's also prepared to take legal action against the state of Texas to get the wire off her property. Meanwhile, Governor Abbott has vowed to take his fight against the DOJ, quote, all the way, unquote, to the Supreme Court. Wednesday and Friday, Ben Wilson Street will close between Airline Road and Red River Street from 4 a.m. to 1 p.m. so that crews can continue pouring concrete. All businesses and homes in the construction zone will remain accessible. The construction is part of the $7.2 million Ben Wilson Street Airline Road to U.S. Highway Business 59 project. The national average price for a gallon of regular gasoline surged by four cents on Tuesday to $3.64 a gallon. AAA says that's the biggest one-day increase nationally since June 7, 2022. But gas prices are much lower today than they were last summer when they spiked above $5 a gallon nationally. This follows a jump in oil prices. AAA Texas reports gas prices in Victoria County jumped 10 cents in one day. The average price per gallon now, $3.21. Drivers who take DuPont Bridge will need to take an alternate route Wednesday and Thursday. TxDOT will conduct an inspection over the Barge Canal. The bridge will have restricted access Wednesday and Thursday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. You can see Crossroads today on YouTube. And stay with us coming up on 25 News Now at 10. A South Carolina convenience store owner charged with murder in the shooting death of a teenager was in court Tuesday for a hearing. Also ahead, two popular drugs used for weight loss and diabetes are now reportedly causing stomach paralysis. Hi. I'm Detective Kelly Gibbs with the Victoria Police Department. Victoria Crime Stoppers is seeking information about an aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. On Sunday, July 16th, around 11.20 p.m., a shooting occurred at a residence at the 4100 block of Callis Street. 
A 34-year-old male resident was shot by an unknown male after a fight between the two men took place at the location. The suspect is described as a black male with a scruffy beard, dreadlocks, with the la last seen run into a white car. The victim was transported to a local hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. If you have any information, call Victoria Crime Stoppers at 361-572-4200. You can also submit a tip by using the P3 Tip app on your Android or Apple device or by visiting CrimestoppersVictoria.com. All tips are anonymous, and if you give information that leads to an arrest or charges being filed, you could earn a cash reward. With the Victoria Police Department, I'm Detective Kelly Gibbs. South Carolina convenience store owner who's charged with murder and the shooting death of a teenager was in court Tuesday. Rick Chow is accused of fatally shooting 14 year old Cyrus Carmack Belton on May 28th after falsely accusing him of shoplifting bottles of water. Chow's defense team questioned the search warrant served on Chow's home and business. They argue the state had no business accessing what was taken, which included personal laptops with banking records. But the state argued those items were needed to look for store policies on shoplifting. The attorney representing Chow's wife said the policy doesn't exist in written form. This is confusion, failure to do the simplest thing in the world, to call the cooperating attorney and get the information and save the heartache and the uh, terror when people, multiple cars, multiple police officers show up at her home and then her business. The judge said he would rule on the issue next week. Rick Chow is still awaiting a bond hearing on the murder charge. Doctors are seeing some cases of stomach paralysis in patients who took Ozempic and Wegovy. Ozempic and Wegovy both use a drug that imitates a natural hormone to slow the passage of food through the stomach. Some doctors are concerned the drugs may cause or exacerbate stomach paralysis in some patients may cause that, which can lead to excessive vomiting. 
The FDA was unable to determine if the medications were the cause or if it was caused by a different issue. The maker of Ozempic and Wegovy says these drugs have been used for years to treat diabetes and obesity. Now to one historic birth. A new mom and dad sharing their story which just ended in the birth of their son thanks to the miracle of science. It's a medical milestone in the U.S. For the first time outside a clinical trial, a uterus transplant recipient has delivered a healthy baby. For us, this was, this is what I feel like I, I knew that I was supposed to do this. When Mallory was a teenager, she learned she was born without a uterus and would never be able to biologically carry a child. My sister is very close, so she'd always said from diagnosis that she was going to be our surrogate for us. And she was carrying Mallory and Nick's first daughter. From the minute she could talk, she was always asking for a sibling. So I feel like our trying to have another one was for her purposes. Mallory and her husband Nick decided to participate in a program at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, and soon they were accepted. I think we were both in shock. Yeah, I think that's the best way of putting it. First, Mallory went through a uterus transplant, followed nine months later by an embryo transplant. Women's health um, and, and reproductive medicine is really about making sure there are options for women. Babies being born is always a special event. But, um, and I, I'm using some strong words here, but I, I, I think of these as our miracle babies. I never once thought, like, what if this doesn't work? I knew it would. More than two decades after her diagnosis, Mallory defied the odds, giving birth to her son. I got to hold him and I was just very overwhelmed um, that he was actually there and he was healthy. Rhiannon and Alley, ABC News, New York. The University of Alabama in Birmingham is one of four uterus transplant programs in the U.S., the first outside a clinical research trial. Today, actors and their supporters came out in force for a SAG-AFTRA rally in New York's Times Square. More than 160,000 performers in the U.S. are on strike, stalling nearly all production in the USA. Contract negotiations with studios and streaming services have stalled over pay increases, residual payments, and artificial intelligence. The Writers Guild of America is also on strike. This is the first time in more than 60 years both unions are on strike at the same time. The Texas Tribune reports a new state law eliminating the elections department in Harris County is likely to cause large disruptions and issues for voters in elections this fall and potentially in 2024. You can catch this on our Twitter page. Well, good evening, everyone. Here are the high temperatures that we observed today. 99 for us in Victoria, 100 in uh, Port Lavaca. Amazing. And uh, those of you should happen to know that they fixed the thermometer in Kennedy. It was officially 99 there. Yes, thank you very much. I think I complained loudly enough. Uh, somebody went up there, probably a bird sat on it or something. Anyway, we're looking at uh, more dust and fewer showers over the next couple of days. We'll be talking about that in a moment.
Well, good evening, everyone. Obviously, we had a few little nice showers come in with the sea breeze this afternoon. We got the, the little ones, as you can see, they developed right about 2, 3 o'clock, and then they rolled inland. Heavier storm uh, affected the Rosenberg area down to about Wharton. You can see it right about there. But then it just collapsed, you know, obviously, without the heating, uh, they don't get going. Next couple of days are going to be a little different because we're getting a big blow of dust coming in all the way from Africa of all places. Every now and then we get this problem. The big dust storms develop over the Sahara. The dust gets into the higher winds, upper winds, crosses the Atlantic with the trade winds and then winds up coming into our area. So as you can see right about here, it's just about on top of us. And so beginning tomorrow, maybe even tonight, uh, tomorrow and, and through the weekend, is going to be shutting down our rain opportunity. And for those of you that might have respiratory problems, the TCEQ is advising you might consider wearing one of those N95 masks like we did for COVID because uh, the dust is actually, we're going to feel it down here at the surface. In fact, it might be fairly dry uh, as that stuff blows in. Very interesting development that we get dust from the Sahara Desert all the way across the ocean. Now uh, we look at the Dome of Doom. It's actually giving us a break for the couple of days, but that's going to be going away because of the dust. But the Dome of Doom continues affecting much of the Intermountain region, Colorado and those places. But as it moves, it's going to roll up to the Midwest right about here it's going to be and boy they're going to have problems in fact there you see our uh, Thursday less shower chance and then by the Friday even less shower chance and then by the weekend no shower chance and as we get to Sunday no shower chance and you can see where the dome is going to be well tomorrow St. Louis Missouri way up here in the middle part of the country is going to be 100 degrees. That's a forecast high. That's tomorrow. I will predict this right now. Uh, two days later, they'll probably be at 102 to 103 as the um, in, impressive heat is going to be parked right over the central plains. And of course, you know, that's corn country up there and how it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem for all of us because if they don't produce corn. How do we get corn? Okay, well, we produce corn too, but what if we don't have enough? So, um, you know, the ag issues get very complicated. Uh, let's take a look at the tropical Atlantic. We have three systems uh, that have some potential, but very little. This is number one right off the coast of Florida. Slight potential of developing, but the truth is probably not. This number two was active for a couple of days and it looked better. But as of tonight, it looks like it's not going to really get together. This one has more time. And if it stays down south right about here, has a better shot at developing. But if it turns north, it's going to be toast because of the uh, shearing winds. So here's a look at your forecast. For those of you in Port Lavaca, looking at an 81 morning, 91 in the afternoon. Yes, a couple of little showers. And then for those of you in Cuero, down to 77, up to about 98. So it's still hot, still humid. But for us crossroaders, well, we've been through this before. We're going to do it again. Less rain chance as we get to Friday, then hot and dusty as we get into the weekend. Hopefully next week by Tuesday, we'll see another resurgence of tropical moisture. That's your seven day forecast. Uh, and we want to remind you that we do have a QR code. We'd love for you to scan that and put crossroads today on your smartphone. Now here's Gio with some big league sports. Big league. I mean, this is little league right here. They're only six years old and they went perfect tonight. That's coming up after the break.
At a crossroads, a six and under softball team in Victoria named The Chosen finished its season today. The young athletes had two games and they needed to win both if they wanted to go undefeated the entire season. In the early game, Chosen won eight to seven and in the later game, they would win 14 to five to complete the perfect season. The Victoria Generals hosted the Brazos Valley Bombers and if you can tell which team is which, it's because they're both wearing dark blue tonight. The Generals scored two runs in the third inning to go up 2-0 to zero and decided to add to it in the fourth. Outfielder Derek Serta, he said boom and blast this one to left center field to bring home one run and he would round first and round second and have an easy stand up triple. The Generals would continue to add to its lead to go up 4-0 to zero at the end of the fourth inning. The Victoria Generals would take care of business tonight and improve its four game win streak. The Generals are now going to host the Bombers tomorrow at 7.05 after winning tonight 9-2. The Industrial Major League softball team, also known as Texas East, is staying alive with the hopes of making it to the Little League World Series. The girls from Industrial took on the state champions from Colorado and it was pure domination. From the jump, the girls in gray had a conga line at the plate, hitting double after triple after double to bring in four runs in an instant to go up 4-0 after just the first inning. Te East, excuse me, Texas East continued to add to it and scored eight runs in total while only allowing run. Now, Texas East will play New Mexico tomorrow at 10 a.m. The game can be watched on ESPN+. Messi proved that his debut was not a fluke, and in his second game, he scored two goals and had an assist. I gotta still get used to seeing Messi in pink. Now, eight minutes into the game, Messi is found in the open field, and he slides it past the keeper off the post, and he cleans it up to put it in the back of the net, 1-0 Miami. Not long after that, Messi passes it outside to a streaker. They cross it in. Messi taps it in again. Too easy. The Argentine soccer star had three goals in two games. Later on, he would assist in a goal to make it 4-0. Inter Miami dominates Atlanta United. Well, the Dallas Cowboys are keeping its sure-handed cornerback for the next five years. That's according to ESPN. The Cowboys signed the former Alabama corner to a five-year deal worth $97 million. The two-time Pro Bowler is getting $21.25 million in a signing bonus. The Cowboys are also in contract negotiations with six-time All-Pro guard Zach Martin, who did not report to training camp because he is unhappy with the lack of interest in restructuring his contract. Martin is a team captain and rated 99 in the latest Madden video game. Lastly, the Houston Astros stomped out the Texas Rangers, who win 4-3. The two will play tomorrow at 7-10. Now the Astros are only one game behind the Rangers. Things are beginning to tighten up in the AOS. With that, your sports, Don and Karina, back to you. Thanks, Gino. Now stay with us. Coming up on 25 News Now at 10, we'll take a last look at your weather with Mac. Plus, a university student in Wisconsin is educating others on how to be a mermaid. Find out what we mean straight ahead.
American swimming star Katie Ledecky tied swimming legend Michael Phelps' record by winning a 15th career individual world swimming title. She did in the 1500 meter freestyle at the World Championships in Japan. The 26-year-old cruised to an easy win, finishing 17 seconds faster than the second-place swimmer from Italy. Wow. Ledecky says she feels she's like she's getting better every time she swims, making her a gold medal favorite for next year's Olympics in Paris. We go from swimmers to swimmers. A <laughs> University of Wisconsin Milwaukee student is working on a master's degree in freshwater sciences, and in their spare time, they work as a professional mermaid. <laughs> Echo says that entails teaching children about inclusion, aquatic safety, and conservation through a special multi day mermaid class certified by the Professional Association of Diving Instructors. Now, Echo began their business at 17, and since then, the seasoned pro mermaid and lifeguard has seen the endeavor grow each year. Here's rule one on how to be a mermaid. Okay. Number one, rule number one, don't make waves. <laughs> <laughs> but it all sounds kind of fishy to me. Oh. Now, uh, Mac is telling us yeah. that the heat dome has left. Well, and, and it, now, it kind moved. Of, well, it moved, and now we're going to get the dome dust. of dust, dust. the oh. dust dome. Uh, everybody's going to be singing dust in the wind tomorrow uh, because it blew all the way from the Sahara. You'll start seeing it and feeling it tomorrow as the rain chances begin to decrease and we get to the weekend. So it's going to be hot and dusty. So what a, what a, what a, what a concept. We go from hot and muggy to hot and dusty. So the rain tomorrow will be pretty much it. It'll be probably over by Thursday. Looks like a hot and dusty weekend. But for those of you that have respiratory problems, you probably want to take this very seriously if you have bronchitis or anything like that. Okay? That's right. All righty. Thank you, Mac. Now, a rescue in Colorado is caring for some adorable bobcat kittens. They were rescued after their mother mm -hmm. was unfortunately hit by a car. Law enforcement and animal control officers worked together to rescue these four kittens, but sadly, the smallest one of them died. But caregivers say these three appear to remain pretty strong, and caregivers interact with the animals just once a day to make sure they stay afraid of humans. So worth it on release when they just jump out of that crate and they know where they're supposed to go when they do not want anything to do with you. <laughs> a fifth kitten was spotted in the area, so the search is on for that little one. Once they're all together, the kittens will be transferred to a bigger facility where they will have lots of room to grow outside. Oh, look Ew. at those kitties. See, they look so, can you imagine that one day those cats will be oh, furious little monsters? 250 pounds. But right well, now, they look we like hope not little kittens. That big. <laughs> you know. Look at those But they babies. are cute. Babies are always cute. We hope someone adopts them. Yeah. That be good? <laughs> someone adopts a bobcat? Oh, well, you know, I never know. you got to have there's, some There's room. people out there with those yeah. kinds of Check interests Check your state rules on that. Yeah. Yeah, That's I'm right. Sure. That's right. Alrighty, well, thank you, Mac, and thank you, Dawn, and thank you for joining us for 25 News Now at 10. Join Carolina Astorine and meteorologist Trey Mining. 25 News Now sunrise starting at 5 a.m. Good night, everybody.